than a decent cuppa on the bank side of a beautiful lake, talking absolute garbage with your mates. So this week we are fishing on the beautiful Ashbury fisheries on the top lake. It's a nice day now, it's warm. Yeah. I think they're not, uh, bad, they're not bad conditions actually. It feels like, um, I don't know, it just feels like there's a, there's a chance of catching one. Which is always a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> not seeing lots though, as in like, uh, this morning, yeah. there's definitely fish about and you saw more over there. Yeah, I saw a few last night and I, I reckon that there were more over there as well, you just didn't see them. Yeah. I got the impression that um, there were a good number of fish there, nothing out in the middle. No. And I thought there'd be more weed, but there's... Yeah, well, I, what happened with the weed then? Because I thought this whole film was going to be about fishing in the weed and like really technical <laughs> fishing and finding little holes and stuff like that. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's about bear as a baby's bum, isn't it? Well, no, it, well in front of me here, there's, there's a, a huge amount of weed, but... Um, so last year, was there more weed then? Definitely, yeah. I mean, this swim obviously was, you know, different shape. And all at the front here was just big clumps of weed where they just, you know, dredging it out. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so do, do, do you prefer, would you prefer this or fishing in the weed? I, I like fishing in a, a clear spot. I do like clear. I, I'm not very confident when it comes to weed. I have to say, I would, you know, put a chod on or... Uh, yeah, I, I'm not experienced enough. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, do you do you prefer weed then? Without a shadow of a doubt, no. I, I I don't I don't like this as much because unless I mean you've got you've got this weed going around the the uh, the outer sort of rim of the lake, yeah, which is the best feature on the lake. But there are no bars or there's not an awful lot of undulation out there. Fish uh, just rolled on your spot. Just where that gull is, just behind it. Can you yeah. see the clear spot? I saw it. Unless it's a bird. It uh, might be diving on the bait that I put out before I came around. It could be. Round. But yeah, it just... So you've got a lake which, um, which is, hasn't got a lot of depth change. It's pretty uniform. It's got no weed in it. So you are, you're trying to identify areas. If they're out in the middle of the lake and they're living out there, it's like you're trying to identify an area that they're more likely to pick a bait out. If you've got a lot of weed out there, yeah, it's, they're, they're just giving away their whereabouts. Yeah, I suppose like you know that's their place that they they like to hide and you know chill out and be safe. But here, I mean, like in this right-hand corner, it is it's it's chocker full of weed. Yeah, um, and they do get in there, but then uh, Ash just sort of says, you know, that they they move around. And you know what Ash is like, he's, he's prolific at this. He knows this water inside yeah. and out. Um, That's the interesting thing. When you see Ash fishing here, although there's not a, you've got bits of gravel, you've got silty areas, you've got, you know, just general debris on the bottom, but there isn't an awful lot, but Ash will come in here and he will find something out there, which I'm not good enough to, to know what he's looking no, for. No, me neither, no, no. But do you know that, so that's what the other thing with weed side, when you've got like a lot of weed down in a corner like that, that covering the whole corner of the lake yeah. and it's shallow, especially when those temperatures get higher, you're going to get, so you're getting photosynthesized in there. Yeah. So during the day, those fish will be in there because of extra oh. oxygen. But then at night Shh. you get, um, hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> but so you get like super saturation on those hot days. Oh. Yeah. But in the morning, you get, you, you're not going to find a lot of oxygen in there. No, no. So the fish will, you know, they're not as likely to be there. You know what I mean? So, Oi. baby, what's 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 it? Stop it! You're ruining the film. No, it's making <laughs> it's it's making the film more. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? So, mean yeah, yeah. So the yeah. weed is like it does. It, 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 I mean, it's not very hot at the moment, and no. the pressure's quite low as it's well, isn't low. it? It's like yeah. only it's like a thousand and ten, which is pretty low. Yeah. You know, so that that isn't going to be such an issue. But if it was like really hot and you've got a lot of weed in a corner like that, you would fish it during the day and, you know, and probably count it out more in the early mornings and maybe look at that end of the lake. Yeah. So do you think what's, what about safety and fishing in the weed? I always a bit nervous that, 
you know, the chances of it getting locked up and, you know, losing the fish yeah. or on a pull or... I, I'm always a bit nervous about that. Um, what, why, why is that? I mean, if, if you lost a lot of fish like that? Not, not necessarily. I just, just think that, you know, if you... If you like, even with this bar in front of me here, um, the fish I had here last year, as soon as it hit that, it just locks up, doesn't it? Just, you know... So what did you do? I, I ended up bullying it, did lifting you? it. So it actually came over the top, the softer or the lighter part of the weed. Yeah. Which, where I could have got a hook pull very easily yeah. than that. Um, but lucky it didn't. But yeah, I just don't know. Maybe it's just a confidence thing. And I remember um, I remember when I was at Corder and Rob Burgess was uh, doing so. It, was, it, it, it rubbed a few people at the wrong way. How he was getting fish out of weed. He was like using the rod. But, um, but it, it really worked. There are some like... There are some like crude ways of getting fish out, and it looks like, oh, should you be? When we so for as an example, when we were in France last year, um, it wasn't the weed wasn't like really really high, but it was thick and dense. Right. And they would literally so a couple of foot high. Right. And when they went into that, game over. It was literally like they were in like twenty foot of weed. Yeah. You could not get them out. Yeah, Couldn't yeah. pull them or anything. And actually, I think pulling and pulling like that is probably worse. We put the rod down, put the rod down on the ground, hold the line like you would if you were on the boat. Yeah, yeah. Trying, and all you had to do was one little pull that far, one little far. I think that's what Rob was talking about. Yeah. Like one pull that far, and as soon as it moved, that was it. It was out straight away. Yeah, I could have probably actually in the same value that um, when I fish with Frank, um, I was fishing over the far margin, had a run, it went straight into the into the into the weed, and. And I kept the tension. Yeah. He came over in about three seconds and hand. That's it. Pulled it just. That's just all gently. you need to do. You, uh, and it did, it did come out. You, do, you just hold the line. Yeah. So put the rod down, get the line, and you literally pull it. Yeah. Very, very slightly. Very. And it, you, you haven't got to put. It doesn't feel like you're putting any pressure on it whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. as soon as you do it, as soon as it moves, it's out. Yes. It's out. It's. it's, it's yeah. It's really, really effective way of getting them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we used to, like, put the rod down, slacken off, it'd start moving, hit into it, then it'd go into it again. And you're just playing this cat and mouse game. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, when um, Carl had petals from the mirror, and I, you know, you, when you're sitting behind the camera, and obviously you want a result, of, of course, and Carl being Carl... He's, you know, he's got good experience, he knows what to do. The only way to get that fish out that he felt confident was to get over the top of it. Yeah. So to get in and get the rod up tip over and to pull it up. Yeah. Which, you know, obviously then it sort of sailed through and he got it, it was good. Um, but yeah, I don't, I, maybe from my point of view, I just, just not, it's just a confidence thing really. I've just, yeah. you know. I, th I think, you know, getting back to what you're saying there, like you say, the trouble is if you, um, you, you know, if you're just, if a fish is out there and it's weeded up and there's a lot of weed in front of you, you're literally just dredging the fish back into the yes. back into the weed. So like like you were saying with Carl, yeah. getting the other way around. I think that that, um, that hand lining technique, they're not, you're not pulling them like that. As soon as they feel that tension, they're moving up. Yeah. They move up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a totally different. But you should, um, if you were more used to this sort of fishing, you, you would soon get that, you know, you'd soon get into the swing of it and actually realise that um, fishing in the weed uh, can actually be, you know, can actually be easier. Yeah. And I think you'll find a lot of anglers that fish on um, gravel pits and they're used to weed and much prefer weedy lakes. Right. Um, well, yeah, I, I mean, uh, from, a, from a, if I was a fish, that's where I'd be. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like food, safety, uh, you know, cover, shade, yeah. all those, you know, that, that's, that's, that's a kind of a no-brainer, isn't it, really? I, um, I was talking to Pete Regan. Pete Regan, right, is, I don't know if you've, if you've, if I've you've watched it. I've seen his podcast, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Pete, like, Pete plays the fool, right, but he's a very, very intelligent guy who thinks about his fishing yeah. a, a great deal, yeah. really good angler. And I always remember, like, he'd said the story about he was seeing these fish in the weed and like everybody was like you know they've got their conventional ways of trying to oh, like how are we going to avoid you know how are we going to get them out of the weed are we going to find a spot around it or whatever and pete was saying 
and it just casted straight into it. And his analogy was, if you cast straight into it, like, and providing you've got a presentation, yeah. some, if, as long as you've got a presentation, those fish have got no idea that they're being fished for, which right. makes them easier to catch. Right. And he caught loads doing yeah. that. On that particular session, it was on some quite, quite tough water, Rock and it was just water. casting straight into it. Blimey. We had the same thing in France, but not quite to, to Pete's, um, you know, kind of degree where um, there was a, a, a lot of weed in the lake and the locals were going out in boats trying to find little clear patches, which was really hard because yeah. the lake was 40 foot deep. Yeah. And, you know, the patches were like quite few and far between. So you're all going to the same parts of the lake. We turned out, and my friend would definitely have to take credit for this because he's done a bit more of this than me. Right, we... So we were going to use a, a zig rig, two and a half foot, right. just above the weed. Yeah. All fished away. My mate has fished quite a lot, which is kind of like a hinge rig, a hinge choddy rig. Yeah. Where, so you're not casting right into it, but you're, you're sitting the rig on the top of it. And it's, and it's popped up just enough that you've got a presentation, right. but it's not sort of crudely set above it. Okay. And, um, and... So you've not got a line going across the top of a weed. No, no, the lines go in. The lines going down. So you know, so it's got that sort of choddy effect, and then you've got a boom, and then you've got you know, and then you've got your little your, your little hook section that's just sitting up. Right. And um, and we were casting big baits, big heavy baits, just straight into the weed. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, are we going to catch them? But luckily for us, a friend had one within ten minutes. Yeah. So all of that doubt. You know, about, you know, because this weed was thick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it smelled really spicy as well. It's the heaviest, toughest weed I've ever fished in. As soon as you caught the first one, it's like, all oh, right, that's great. We can just do this. <laughs> and we were just, uh, we were doing that. And I was, uh, we caught quite a few fish that week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and I know that all the locals around, they never seen, but again, it's not even trying to find the spots around it. You can fish in it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So what about your fishing? Because like you, you, we fished together, but you've not been fishing. <laughs> why have you been? What have you been? Why? What is it? The I, I have done literally. I've done, literally done no serious fishing for five years. When I'd done that podcast, the period from when I started that podcast to finishing it, I didn't go fishing once. That's mad. Some of it was. Some of it coincided with COVID. Yeah. Um, but some of it is. I think you can just you can just have too much of something. Yeah. And um, for me, you know, I, I, you know, I've always liked to sort of flitter around with different things. I've got, I kind of got five core interests that I really, you know, they're not. That's they're very not specific. <laughs> they're not. They're not. They're not. They're, like, they're, they're not. They're varying and. And I've always flitted between the, the five. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and. Uh, but then one of them is fishing. Oh yeah. And then the, the biggest one is fishing, really. Yeah. I started fishing when I was nine, nine years old. Yeah. That, and I, you know, there's a lot of, you know when you see people, they go off fishing and they go off and sell their fishing gear. Yeah, and I've done like, that. Yeah, I have done Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you said yeah, that. I did, yeah. And that, but that was... Probably, so was that a regret then for you? Well, it, it was, obviously. It wasn't at the time. And the thing is, like what you've just said there, you know... I've, I've worked in the industry for 25 years. That sounds terrible, doesn't it? You know, but, but, and I did fish still, but I did lose the passion for fishing. The same reason? Just that you, I don't know, you're in it every day and you almost want to step away from it and you're not doing your own fishing. Yeah. I know the gear that you use, you're using it with the brand. You know, and the places you go are with them, and you're not doing your fishing. Exactly. Um, yeah. And I guess, uh, when was it? I was with a brand, and I just finished with them, and I just thought, right, I'm going to sell my gear. It's, it probably really? wasn't that's, that's so extreme. It was extreme. But the thing is, what I did, I did think, because my second love, as you know, is, is wildlife photography. Mm. I bought myself like a good setup for, for that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then obviously, like after about a year, I started thinking, well, actually, whilst I'm sitting on the bank taking pictures of grebes 
and you know trying to get otters and all the whatever i could have had my rods out here yeah and then probably like like we had the conversation of the week and you said you know fancy a bit of fishing yeah you know? yeah yeah obviously mine was pretty extreme <laughs> <laughs> but you know i think do you not find though when you say you were you know so you got back into but you you just once you're getting back into it's, it's not like you're you're going from fishing to you know taking up motor racing no. it's because you're because you're always out in the countryside yes you you must have known that eventually you were going to get pulled back to that i just didn't think about it at the time and also i didn't really think it will come back at some point i wasn't any any rush to like you know, to, to come back and just buy gear again because that would have been really. So, stupid. when you sold your gear, right? Did you think? Because some people think they're selling their gear. That's final. I've had enough. I don't want to ever do this again. Did I don't, you? No, I didn't think I did do that. I, I literally just thought I'm going to do it, and then give it have a break, have a break. You know, I had a small garage, and right. Jane just you know, I've, I, I packed the whole place out with crap anyway. So, I just thought I'll get rid of it, and. and I'll, I'll pull it all back. I think one of the other things was, like I was saying earlier, is that you, you end up using the tackle of the brand that you work with. And I'm not saying that I feel, I feel super privileged to have worked in, in the industries and make nice people. And so it's nothing to do with that. It's more the fact is that I've, you know, the thing that I really loved about the adventure and the experience, I wasn't getting that because you had to take your fishing gear and a second set of fishing gear, and your cameras, and I'm saying that now, look. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this, I, I love doing the film stuff. I love making adventures, having going on adventures, meeting people. But it's what I, I choose. I'm not, you know, I don't have to do it as a brand. And, yeah. Um, I think a you, lot of people are like that, aren't they? Yeah. You know, that they, 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 they enjoy it because it is a choice. Now, you might choose to, you might choose to go out Three, three, four nights a week, or whatever it is, but yeah. you're still making a choice. Where, I think mean, anybody that's not worked in it, and you know, and it looks like, oh, you know, you've got aspirations. To, don't get me wrong, right? There are plenty of people that work in it that absolutely love it still. Yeah. But, um, but once that choice is taken away, and you have to do it, that not just with fishing, with anything in life. Yeah, yeah. It's like being told, you know, your favourite food. You know, you if you if you had to eat like lobster every day, you know, you just, you just I don't know if that's a terrible analogy. That's a analogy. terrible analogy. Just a really bad analogy. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I would love to eat that. No, no, no. No, no, you are right. But, but it, it, is... it, it just changes because you, know, you take the choice. You know what? I'm going to choose to have a nice bit of lobster for dinner tonight. It's a special treat. But then yeah. as soon as you, you can eat that, it's just not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It changes. It, it, it's like, it, it's a funny one because when we, when we go on holiday, and it is a, it's a joke now that we say to ourselves, we always want to live where we go on holiday. This is lovely. I can live here. Yeah. You know, but then it wouldn't be special. No. You know, and this no. thing, like being able to come out once a month fishing, once a month. <laughs> really? <laughs> I come That's out your fishing. quota. That's yeah. <laughs> once a month. So, and this is, you know, it's, it's apart from the fact, you know, there's a bit of, not pressure. I don't ever do pressure with the camera thing. I just think that I want to make a film. I want to go fishing with people I like and, and enjoy this. And it is, it's, it's my rule, you know what I mean? Like, we, we, we're here to fish. I think um, because you've got such a, you know, a deep interest in the countryside mm. and wildlife, yeah. providing you don't become just anti-fishing, and, yeah. you know, that, that, that immersion that you've got with nature is always eventually going to probably... Well, bring that, back to this because you appreciate like what we love about it. Our yeah. conversation earlier about you know being on that podcast and bringing up this, this subject of otters, which is is a very controversial subject. Yeah. Um, you know, as an angler, you totally understand how terrible, you know, devastating they can be to a to a fishery. But as a wildlife lover, to see one in the you know I've seen them in, in you know on Sky and uh, even local, I've seen them, and it is amazing to see them in a natural environment. But they are, yeah. They will devastate a whole system. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like it's such a yin and yang. You know, that thing. is for you. That is very. It's it's, it's 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 very conflicted. Yeah. But in some ways, right? You know, I think people like yourself. It's it's probably it's it's probably it's good in some respects because 
because the, the fish the fishing people fraternity yeah well we've obviously got quite an extreme view on otters because yeah. we've seen what they do you know the other side you know they were reintroduced what was it 30 years ago yeah yeah yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and uh, you know for those people it's like it's a success story like a nature success story yeah, yeah, yeah. isn't it um, it's, it's like it's like when you look at when you watch Attenborough I think that is a beautiful Bengal tiger but somewhere in that forest in the little village there's a whole family of people going I'm not going out because I'm going to get eaten by exactly that <laughs> yeah no we're good with our analogies so, aren't we? <laughs> but yeah it is it's, 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 it's true though isn't yeah, it yeah, yeah there yeah. is a di different perspective and it's 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 good in some respects that well you can make a quite an informed judgment on that because you see it from both sides yeah as well. yeah yeah, yeah. Um, um, so anyway going back to my original piece which was you said this week you said I fancy a bit of fishing yes and is that was that because like for me it might be me watching a film like I mean watching Passion for Angling and you know all that sort of stuff and it's kind of like you think oh, I'd like to do that yeah from a film from a from an experience but you you said that you, you hadn't watched any films no what 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 is it then? You just missed it. No, do, do you know what? I think it's more. Um, I'm start. I'm starting to get used to life now, away from not working in fishing, yeah. which is which is good for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and as soon as you take that away, like great, I don't have to worry about doing something for fishing anymore. Yeah, it just loosens everything up again. Yeah, and yeah, all yeah. of a sudden it's like, and then it just starts to come back, and you you know. It's like it's a it's a bit of a release. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I've also got some, I've got some books actually, some fishing books. I can't give in a lot of fishing books. Yeah. And um, one guy lives locally. He's just written. He's he's written a, a trilogy of books. Right. You would really really like those. Okay. Because he's a real conservationist as well. Oh, okay. One of the most interesting anglers oh, out man. there. I was amazed he would ever. Re and it, so he's written this book, and I bought the first one last year, and. I used to love reading fishing books. I used to read every fishing book that came out. Yeah. Until they got too many. Yeah, yeah. But I would have read his book in like a couple of days, 10 years ago. Right. I haven't touched it. So, so yeah, like maybe now it's like, you know, it's, it's starting to come back a little bit. Oh, well, that's good, man. That's the question good. is, where do I go fishing? Well, <laughs> unfortunately, you had to... Well, you you ditched your uh, yeah no your I did, survey ticket. I, I ditched all my tickets, all uh, my tickets. But, uh, but yeah, you you've been talking about you know, you know if if ever there came an opportunity for. Um, I've, you say, you I've, 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 yeah, the, the trouble is right, and th this is the other thing about why you can actually get a bit fed up with fishing. Yeah. When you've had it so good, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. When you fish some of the best waters yeah. that you could, and not just for the fishing, for the people, everything. Yeah. Do you know it's like literally like getting to the end of the rainbow and thinking, gee, what what is left? What's left to do? Yeah, yeah. But there, but there is. But I, I I need a lake. I like gravel pits. I need a lake, which has probably got a few. I've not caught a fifty pounder. Right. So I'd like to catch a 50 pounder uh, in, in England. Yeah. Um, uh, I like big waters where I can sometimes cast a little bit and, you know, not are you, necessarily. Are you, are you set focus? Is it just carp then? Is it fishing? Yeah. I know you, you were yeah, a carp I've angler. Never been, I've, never, I, I've done all that fishing when I was younger. Yeah. But, and I know he's like, talk about barbel fishing. I've done a little bit of that. I've done a bit with that yeah. with Guru and stuff. Yes. And that was, that was, being out with Nigel Bovaway doing some of that. Yeah. I love going out with those and, and seeing the way those match anglers fish as well. Yeah. But I'd done all that when I was younger and then I fell in love with carp fishing. And the carp fishing is, carp fishing is like hunting yeah. and set, having a plan. And for me it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And having a plan and, and setting your stall out. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not particularly great at it compared to some people, but I... But I like that whole strategic. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just thought that, like, like even uh, was it last year with Adam um, on the Y, and I'd never been barbel fishing before. Fished, you know, rivers for chub and roach and you know even carp. But um, I think just the whole experience 
and I kind of feel you you are a bit of an experienced person. You like a new experience. Yeah. yeah. And not saying that it would be you take it up as a hobby or something, but yeah. You know, you know, when you look at the grand word of fishing, you know, there yeah, there's many different like like our our fun time that we had. I know tuna. what you're going to say. I'm really glad you brought that up. <laughs> Our tuna experience. <laughs> that, that, that didn't last very long, that did it? That was awesome, though, wasn't it? Well, it, it was awesome. But, uh, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> I just... These guys will not know. Unfortunately, it never came out. But it was a, it was a great um, right. couple of days. Do we need to tell that story a little bit? It or? will be. I think it, you. I think you need to. Yeah. Explain. Where, where do we go? So we we went down to uh, Plymouth. Yes. Um, I don't know about you. I used to watch Bluefin at Wicked Tuna. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. the time. Yeah. And um, and I wasn't aware until a couple of years ago that bluefins have started to to, to get back in English short yeah. waters like big time. Yeah, yeah. There's a and now they're trying to work out. What are we going to do with all of this? Yeah. So we had the opportunity last year, didn't we, to go down to Plymouth yep. with Rob Thompson. Yeah, lovely, like br- lovely guy. Lovely like guy. He's like a brilliant, uh, you no, know, he's a proper, what is he, a skipper. Seaman. What does he call skipper. himself? Yeah, a skipper. He, yeah, a great guy. And he, know, he knows the seas really well. Yeah. Um, so we went down there to film a documentary on bluefin tuna fishing. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny, though. I think because we had to have a night there, obviously, yeah. and it was all, you know, was the weather going to be good enough for the boat to go out, all that sort of stuff. But, but there was another hurdle. <laughs> 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 so what, what I warned you about before, because I'd done it going out to do a recce before, was that the, the seas can get quite rough and seasickness is not a very nice thing to have. No, no. Um, and so I'm we, not, I don't think I'd actually... I had, I've been on boats and I've even been sea fishing. I wasn't seasick. So, so when you said about that, I thought, well, I'd be fine, you know. My emotion is fine, you know. I can, I can ride a fairground and not be sick. And, but, anyway, go on. The funniest thing, though. <laughs> so we're going out, right, and the sea was, it was even rougher that, that, the second time. And we're going out, and we're like 45 minutes in, and I think, oh, no. The I'll watery start- mouth. Well, for me, it's the temperature starts to go up. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh no, I'm going to have to go out on the deck. And the, and the deck hand, the guy Rob was driving the boat, and there was a deck hand guy out sorting the rods and everything out. And he, he came out, he took one look at me, and he said, "Don't worry, Sai. If you want to throw up, just throw up all over." There. And as soon as he said that, it's like, oh no, you know, like the genie's out the bottle. They know, they know I'm really <laughs> ill again. And as soon as he said that, right right I need to throw up so I went to throw up and I was like looking straight at the ocean and then I looked at my right and you were right next to me throwing up with dolphins coming out the water right in front of us <laughs> oh that was the, and the that dolphins was as well I mean it's just like wow. I mean no. the thing is the, the, the pressure not wasn't it wasn't pressure but you know I, I I'd filmed I was filming on the deck I was you know it was, it was hard work holding the camera and doing all that stuff you had uh, not you didn't have a script as such, but you, we you know we had a target. We had to get a fish, and obviously you had to then get into your harness, make sure you were ready. Well, well this is the thing. So the bite, so the bite bit, that was brilliant. <laughs> so it was like middle of the afternoon. We were both very, Just, very. Ill. We were both yeah. like it was like Jaws. We were both like this on the boat, <laughs> like this, rocking backwards Quiet. and forwards, like no noise, just rocking like this. And we had four rods out, didn't we? Yeah. And, what, and, and they're out, on, they're, you've got these things called riggers, haven't you? Where yeah. the line is clipped onto the rigger. And what it didn't realise is when you get a bite off a bluefin tuna, the first thing you hear is a ba Yeah. So we're like this, ba <laughs> And it's like literally someone trying to pull you out of like, like intensive care yeah. and tell you to hit that rock. Yeah, but you, I think the adrenaline definitely helped, didn't it? Because we, obviously, like, you know, the, the sound went ding, and then it, you, you just went into, oh, I've got to get there. <laughs> and then you he did as well. He, he had to, you know, get your harness on. I was kind of trying to stand still and trying to get this camera on you. And, um, and it emptied, it, it, it ran, it was, a one, it was about half a mile run that yeah, it, it, it was. It was amazing, amazing run. <laughs> Crazy. But, but all that time of just 
sitting there like, oh God, sick as dogs. And all of a sudden, bang, you're just in that. <laughs> it was just hilarious. So but, you're filming away, right? So you're back on it. I've got the fishing rod in my hand, winding this blue fin in. <laughs> and unfortunately it fell off. And the yeah. funny thing was, right, it falls off. And then five minutes later, we're back like this again. <laughs> <laughs> and do you remember, I was so ill, right? So this, this, this whole filming project had gone out the window. And we didn't find any more tuna. And I was so ill. Do you remember, Rob said, do you want to drive the boat back? Yes, yes. Just, just uh, <laughs> to like, take your focus off of just doing this. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was so, fun, man. Yeah, oh, dearie me. And, and like that, that, that kind of just shows like, you know, it, it was more the experience, wasn't it, than actually catching, obviously it'd be an amazing to catch a tuna. Oh my God. But, you know, the actual experience was just, it was hilarious. That it is, hilarious. that is a, 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 it's a bucket list thing for anglers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know that some people like to go fishing and do their own fishing and stuff. And obviously with that type of, you're, you're in the hands of the people that are, 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 you know, are running the trip. Yeah. But even so, that, that, those, they are awesome fish. Yeah. And, you know, it's not that dissimilar to this when you get a bite and the, the you know, ripping tape. Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. I think, like, you know, what you're talking about, it's like, one, if you're an angler, you're an angler. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Although, you can appreciate yeah. the different types of angling. And, but that's what I'm saying about, you know, like, you know, you've, you've kind of, you feel like you could pick up the rods again and go out, yeah. get your ticket. Yeah. But, well, I'm thinking, I'm, you know, I'm definitely going to speak with, um, Mr. Fisher and you know, go and do some barbel fishing. You're gonna have to come. Yeah. Actually, I think that that will be. It's an adventure. You know what I mean? Like, and I would love to go back and do. Would I like to go back and do the tuna thing? I would love to. Do you think he'd let us back on the boat? Again? I don't know. <laughs> it, it was. I think it's not that. I think it, can we get back on the boat? But 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 no, no, Rob said to me. Um, he knew this uh, this musician actually called Bruce Dickinson. Yeah, not Bruce Dickinson not from Iron Maiden. The, Iron the yeah. other, the, the Little Angels, uh, a band called Little Angels. Who were they? They were successful in the, in the early nineties. And this guy had had the same problem and came up with a remedy for seasickness. Yeah, and it, there were different phases to this. You know, a certain amount of caffeine, a certain amount of water, and then he had some of these mixed potions as well, which apparently, but we never really put that to no, the test. No. But Rob. Rob did say to me that that's, a, that's an imbalance in your left ear, I think. And if you've got that imbalance and it affects around 50% of people. Uh, okay. And it might, unfortunately, it might be something that, I don't know, maybe there are people out there that say, no, you can do this and you'll be absolutely fine. Yeah. But it's an awful feeling that. I'll tell you what, though, when I, only a few months ago, I can't remember if it was like a, some kind of a, it wasn't on Land Bible or something, but it was showing this amazing design that they're putting into a boat which counteracted the movement of the yeah. boat. So it's like a, um, a, a gyro. Yeah. And it stops the rocking. It looked incredible. If that happens, we'll go. <laughs> <laughs> that sort it out, that would, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah we'd definitely go. I'd I would love to, wouldn't you? Yeah, I, mean, I would love doesn't to. Doesn't it feel like that was like mission and accomplished? It does, but I, I think with that memory of... of how awful and you you remember how awful it was just sitting there wishing the world was going to end that that was a bad feeling it was a bad that feeling and that uh, that is still imprinted so I know. Yeah. it is psychological isn't it do you want to fish by the way uh, yes that would be nice i can i can help you out with that <laughs> Oh, we've got some fish, side. Fizzy fish. Yes, even better. Even um, better than holding a 45 pounder. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Oh, lovely. Yeah, I'll take a few. Yeah, do it. So this is kind of like a nice welcome break for you to try to ease you back into a. It's like, it's, um, the longest period I was out of fishing for was about five years. Mm. And it just feels so weird. I mean, well, back then I had to, I didn't sell my fishing gear, but I had to buy a lot of new gear because it was quite old, my kit. Right. And um, it's just, it, do you know, like, tying rigs and, um, and 
leg core, tying up leaders and stuff. Mm. When you haven't done it for a while, you know, it's like all these obvious things that take a little bit longer to, yeah. Uh, yeah, to yeah. get used to again. And obviously you, you come from Camp Corder and you're... I, I as, used to. I used to. As a, as an angler, you know, like for me, working for, for Nash and for Red Monkey and, you know, there's certain things that I will never use other things, you know, like I wouldn't use any other cooking things other than Red Monkey because I know how good it is. Right. And it is, obviously, I'm not doing any promotion shit like that. Right. I don't, I don't do that. Yeah. Um, I just need to have good stuff in my yeah. armoury. You know, one of the things that when I did manage to get out and decide what what I wanted to use, I wanted free spirits. I wanted 10 foot free spirits. Um, and I'd, I'd, I've never really had the option. To, I, obviously, I could have done it, but being with a brand, you have to use their stuff kind of thing. Mm. Um, but for you then, like obviously end tackle, was you still, you know, everything's still quarter? No, it? not all of it. No. Got to tell you the, uh, the, the podcast story. It's going to go on a bit, this, isn't it? <laughs> I was doing a podcast with Danny. Danny comes in one day and says, I want to do a podcast on rigs. And I honestly, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I want to do podcasts. I want to talk to people about stories. And like, Dan wants to do a podcast about rigs. Yeah. Luke Stevenson and Aaron Copper, who'd already been on the podcast, two unbelievable anglers, and Dan. Yeah. Um, so they come on to do this. And then we had to, and Dan said, everyone's going to bring their rigs in. And... Um, um, we're going to talk about our, our, our rigs and why we use them. Right. So the podcast, we were about two hours in. Dan said, can I see your rig? Yeah. So this is a rig that I used to use. What, you've all made rigs and you brought them we've all in? All, we've all made them. So, this, so my rig was uh, affectionately known as the Thriller rig. Right. <laughs> what, the Thriller <laughs> rig? Oh, okay. I'm not going to go into why it was called the Thriller rig. But okay. it was, and it, it really did help my fish in. Right. Right, which was great. The only problem was there wasn't a single colder component on that rig. Ah. And actually, there wasn't any corder on it because I couldn't find a corder item of tackle that would substitute a straight-eyed, straight, uh, straight point hook, right. um, a, uh, a, stiff, um, a stiff hook link which could be adapted so soft and stiff so very soft and very stiff yeah um what else was on it the leg clip i was using was different but it was all for a purpose yeah yeah so when dan comes round to me and says can i see your rig <laughs> i hold it up first of all he's shaking his head because these other guys have got these beautifully tied up rigs and everything and my rig i don't know if it was beautiful maybe not quite as nice to look at but it was a really good rig but he said so what have you got on here and i had to tell him every component of the rig <laughs> and then not not one not from the, the hook was he happy? the hook link no he said i'll tell you what we're going to do we're going to change the name of that rig i said oh yeah what's here he said the p45 rig <laughs> so no i don't i can't <laughs> It's oh, funny. He's, Dan Dan is very very sharp he's very very quick <laughs> and uh, um but i think he I think he liked that, and I think it was good for the audience to see that as well. That yeah. Corder weren't forcing me to talk about Corder Tackle. Yeah. Obviously, the podcast was about, uh, essentially, if we wanted people to go out and buy Corder Tackle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. you don't... That was a fish. Yes. That was a fish. Are you sure it wasn't a rud? I saw a tail, top of a tail come out. Was it, was it a red tail? Oh, no, no, it was quite big. <laughs> Unless it was the, the fish back of the rud. So, um... Yeah, yeah. I would say 90% of the time I would use quarter tackle because it's really, really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. If, but, if, I'm, but if, I, if I need to, if I tie a, a thriller rig again, I'll use... Could you not do that now? Do, have they not got stuff in the range that could... No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite as good. They'd hate me for saying that. What do you think about the, uh, the expansion of that quarter? Then, like, obviously, expand. It was going to happen, wasn't it? They're going to go into other things, and you know, they they have got 
an incredible um, pedigree when it comes to design and manufacturing. You know, and I kind of know that from working within the industry. You, you, they've got a quality. You know, even the guys in, in all the other companies, they all say, Cord have got, you know, it's a good quality, a good pedigree. This, uh, this sounds like a right plug, this does, doesn't it? But well, honestly, right. <laughs> when I was working there, on, no, look, on, I know I got I got friends there and stuff, but that doesn't matter. Honestly, I'm just talking as I see it. Yeah, they do things differently to all the other brands, in my opinion. What, as in like their approach or the development or the development of fishing tackle there takes bloody years. Yeah, and it's a pain in the ass right. because you see these brilliant ideas that are coming out of there all the time. It's like Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. Um, but you might not ever see this stuff because they will not put it out on the market until it's absolutely perfect. Um, and they've got so many ideas. They employ a whole team of people. Uh, they employ over 100 people yeah. in, in, in Basildon. But they've got departments of people employed to come up with solutions and design things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't want to speak out of place because I've never worked for any of the other brands. But the other brand, I don't think they've got that sort of infrastructure and that kind of... There a, are certain... I mean, I think like, um, you know, obviously like Nash, have got a very... They've got a big design department. You know, may not be as big. You know, I think for Ridge Monkey, and these are only the brands that I know. Uh, I'm going to eat all these. You, you can eat them, yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> you know, all these people, they, they do have a capability in that way um, you know, maybe, you know, even though you know, it might be smaller scale, Nash is a big, you know, they've got a, a big development team. Um, and I, I personally, I don't think that, you know, somebody like Ridge Monkey, it's, it's, uh, they're, they're super innovative. They've got great vision, they've got a nice brand, you know. And I think that a lot of their stuff, which they do, design it from scratch, and as I say, having been in the They're team. They're designing from scratch, are they? Yeah, so, so a lot of it, yes, okay, some of the tech you can, you know, they use X boards for, for the power or whatever. They're, they're, none of that is... What about the scratch. tackle? Tackle's all, all from scratch. They design it all. It's all from pr- 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 CAD. You know, it's designed, you know, I think it's maybe slightly bigger as in in scale to like quarter because it was very much for... I mean, it is for the UK, but they do a lot for the Euro market, so bigger fish. And, yes, I mean, it's, it's all designed from scratch. Um, you know, even back in the day when they were working with, you know, Max Cottis and, you know, helped develop the, you know, the end tackle range, everything was designed. Do you know, know what, though? I mean, that company, I think, because they're probably, like, the most recent of the bigger companies out there. Yeah. And, and I think most of us, a lot of us, were around in fishing when they first came around. I mean, Corda started, is it 92, 93? Right. So that's, you know, that's 30 years ago. Corda had been around 30 years. But a lot of us will remember that Ridge Monkey stuff, starting with the, uh, you know, the sandwich, the toaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I remember um, a couple of months before Ridge Monkey brought their product out, is it Diablo, wasn't it, that used to make yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I thought, oh, that's a great idea. And then all yeah. of a sudden, you've got um, you've got this company that have just mass. They're, they're selling a product which they didn't design. They didn't design it, did they? But they, the concept of the square pan. Yeah. I don't. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Obviously, the Diablo was round. Yeah, it, round, it was round. It? Cook a bed. Yeah. So it was. De- so, but the idea was kind of there. Yeah. But they absolutely crushed it yeah you know i mean like every single carp angler i know owned a ridge monkey yeah and, and that was the other thing and i said i said to the owner of ridge monkey the other thing with that is we weren't calling it a toaster no we're calling it, it a ridge, ridge monkey. monkey yeah it's a mean, great brand it was oh a great my brand god thing. yeah and to see i mean any competition's got to be healthy hasn't it yeah so to see a new brand come along and grow that quick because that's not necessarily a typical story, that is it? No, um, no. To, to, to see how they've grown so quickly is the, pretty impressive. I think because of the, uh, I mean, like Paul is, he's, he's, he doesn't look at the fishing market. He looks at 
the market. You know, so, so, so now it's a very natural thing to go, right, I'm going to go out into the outdoor. I mean, I mean he's always wanting to do that. And it's, it's you know, like I was saying to you, get him going. <laughs> go on, I've eaten them. Okay. That's fine, you can have... I've got an addictive personality. <laughs> You're addicted to fishy fish. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but, you know, he's, he's, he's kind of got, he's got, you know, big ideas. They've all got big ideas. You know, like even trackers got into, you know, into the end tackle now and and it's I think it's like you know why not people have you know got that got that scope to do that then do it you know but I think that's a competitive market it is is, though isn't it it is it's like um you know you take up anything there you take you start a social media platform and you think right I'm going to do a social media on fishing yeah you know I mean it's um Carl and Alex were kind of like you know the the original you know, fishing influences, and they're still they're still the best at it, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, and they're the yeah, biggest. Yeah. Um, but do you not think it was very very difficult to to start that now? Because, like with a lot of these um, these these influences, it isn't so much that they're the best. It's that they started so early. Yeah. They they built up that big loyal following, and 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 and, and it's like you know it's like a you know it's like growing up with them, isn't it? Yeah, and um, and it, it, it's very it's very difficult if you're coming in. You know, they've had such a head start. Yeah, they, they, I mean, all those sort of influence have such a head start. It's very difficult to catch up. Yeah, but Carl Lance is kind of a, it's quite unique. And the guns I oh, know you still got right. You can take that. No, no, no. no. They, they, it's unique because a you've got two brothers. There's a brand. There's a little little thing. So you've got two brothers who go fishing. And not only that, is that they are incredible on camera and behind the camera. And to top all that off, they're passionate as I'll put a little beat there. <laughs> but you know, so and and yes, they all they want to do is fish. That's what everybody thinks. They know, all they want to do is fish. When you when you speak to Carl now, he's a businessman. You know, he's 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 young, and he's hungry, and he but he can see value in you know offering merchandise. He's not he's not after money. He's not a money grabber. No. He wants to give kids the opportunity to wear a hat or a piece of you know equipment with or some stickers to put on their box. You know, he, and obviously influencers need to be funded in some way. And we sit there and watch these videos, and we love them. So why not? You know, I mean, like. But they, they, those two guys had a formula, which was just like you know when you look at things like Casey Neistat. Do, do, do you mean uh, I, I've done a, I've done a couple of uh, I've done a, I think I've done a couple of interviews with them. Really, they're s- such nice guys. Yeah, they're yeah. so they're so honest. Yes, you know it's it's very unfiltered, and they're very smart. Yeah, um, they are. Yeah, you know they're, they're very focused in, in getting. They, they want to have fun. They want to fish. Well, uh, well, obviously Carl wants to fish more than Alex now, but but Alex, his, his whole thing is, is going off and he wants to do life more. So he wants to, you know... Sorry, what, but cook. what I was going to... Sorry, yeah. I, lost my, I lost my thread there a little bit with that. Um, Find your thread, find it. I, I, I found it, sorry. <laughs> do you know what? Like, that's part of the skill of media as well, isn't it? It's yeah. like, you know, sometimes you can go into something and you have those like blank spots and it's and you need to fill it with putty or something in the middle just to... Just it's to a whole other it, conversation. Just to pad it all over. I, bet, I, I, I could then say, you know, that was your skill in the quarter po- podcast. Was that well, there was, a, there, was a lot of, there was a lot of fillings in there. But no, sorry, anyway, get, getting back to... So do you think... You, you talked about their formula. Yeah. Is that was that, is that a preconceived formula they had, or are they are they learning to develop that formula as they're going? I think they learn, but also the industry and your subject matter help develops for you. Around you know helps you develop because as things come into trend and as product changes, as people change, as as industry, you have to change with it. Otherwise, you just get left behind. And with them, you know, obviously they you have know, a great connection with Corda. Um, they've got this you know, amazing ability to keep you interested in stories. So they, they, they've developed their, their abilities to tell you know, better stories. 
I mean, with obviously with funds and actually where they've got a bit of money to spend, they can go and do more amazing things. You know what I mean? Like, is that is that the stuff that you enjoy particularly about them? Do you do you, um, do you remember last year? I put together a. Uh, I went through all of their films last year, and yeah. I was like looking for some some trends in them, and I found that they're aspirational. We categorise the categories of different videos. Yes. And the aspirational stuff, you know, like where it's like, wow, what's going to happen there, or what? That was that yeah. intrigue. Yeah. Seems, th- those those particular films seem. There's an art to being able to edit a story. You know, it's like when you watch a film. You don't go into a film, and go, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, and it's all, you know, and then it's all downhill from there. They bring you in, they give you the the problem, then you get, uh, you know, a bit of love scene or you know whatever it is, and then and then you come down, and then you've got a final episode and part of that film where actually, where it's a, there's a conclusion, and that's what they do. They they, I, I think they've had that from the start really, but now it's much more apparent they know that you know at 30 minutes of a 45 minute film there's got to be a point where they succeed or somebody falls in or somebody it's really weird isn't it because like like doing this now we're just sat on the bank with a few cameras talking now which doesn't really feel like we're talking to cameras we're just talking yeah but i know that when you go away with this you're going to turn this into something that at the moment i i can't see (laughs) <laughs> I can't know, but I know, I know, because your films are beautiful. So I know. Have you got an idea at the moment about how how this film would actually end up looking? Right now, I mean, like like you're saying there, I, I kind of have an idea of what I'd like. Unless I script it, I, I just don't feel it feels natural if you script no. it too much. I'd like to go go and do the 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 task. You know, if it's, you know, if I'm going to the Y, for instance, I'm going to stop at a hotel. I'm going to go to a bird sanctuary. I'm going to go to this. So there's a natural thing you do and you make that storyline. With this, I woke up this morning, put the camera on, did a few of the rod bits. So, what? That might be eight and a half minutes. And then you've got a whole half an hour section of us just gassing on. <laughs> no fish. No. <laughs> no fish. No. You know, Very little fishing. In my mind now, I'm thinking, what am I going to overlay yeah. over the top of some of this stuff, you know? It's three cameras going on, which is fine. You can split between, you know, but, but as I film, like, you know, Carl and anybody doing films in, in, in any sense, whether it's, you know, you're an amateur, you're a vlog or whatever it is, you kind of think, I wonder what that's going to look like on the edit. When it comes to the edit, you put down your main theme and then you start that story. And then you go, oh, there's a nice shot there. That's going to bring that up. And then you bring that down and you bring it up again. And then maybe I'll put that thing where I caught the fish in the first 10 minutes at the end. Yes. As oh, long you do as, that. Well, as long as like, your consistencies are correct. You know, if you're wearing the right T-shirt at the same time. <laughs> yes. Your watch is not a... You know, just, yeah. Because I, 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 there, there have been, um, I've heard stories about certain films that we all know. Yes. And yep. um, and certain uh, catches didn't even come from the lake, which is really disappointing. But, yeah. But it's uh, is that is that by the by with this type of media? Do you think? Well, I don't know about that. I mean, maybe not in this subject. I mean, a lot of people do vloggers, a lot of vloggers, and um, they're just filming the experience which i yeah. think is is amazing you know i as you know i don't have a competitive bone in my body <laughs> if somebody's making films in another part of the channel on youtube or whatever it is i'm going to watch it and i'm going to enjoy it and love what they do because they they've spent some time and their effort you know it's yeah. just it's an amazing thing to watch um <laughs> yeah you see you 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 see the process yeah uh, you definitely see the process differently to, to most of us. I like, I like that whole thing where you can naturally make a story. Mm. It, it make, does make it harder, because then if you've got a very flat story, you have to try and... There have been times when I thought... I'm oh, you've go got home. two completely incompetent anglers that are not going to catch anything. <laughs> well, yeah. Or one. So, they, so this might be just The Conversation. <laughs> you know, that's the title of it, The Conversation. But... The thing is, the, the, the nice thing about this is it's honest. You know, we put this up there. You say, we didn't catch fish. Like every other angler out there. Yeah. 
You know, we're not, you know, when I watch the ginger fisherman, who is amazing, I've not ama seen him. he's amazing, amazing angler, like, and you know, good presenter as well, makes really cool films, engaging films, and, but he catches all the time, you know, but it's good, because you're like, oh, he's going to catch another pike, catch another perch, kind of. whereas with this, this is hard work, you know what I mean, this isn't, I'm not going to say this isn't quarter, you know, because those boys put effort into all of their films. Yeah, but we're talking there, about two days on yeah, a bank yeah. on, a, on, a, on a not easy lake. Crikey, on a on a quarter or a monster carp shoot, you could have uh, you could have a dozen people out there. Well, that's and it. There's a there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of money riding on that. Actually, I've got a question for you then. So, I don't really watch too much fishing YouTube. Yeah. Is, there, is there anyone coming along? This this guy. Is there anyone else you've seen that's Ginger Fisherman isn't new. He is. Um... He's a, he's, a, he's a proper entertainer, as in, uh, not like, hey, unbelievable. He is, he's, he's an angler that catches fish and can talk to the camera and cuts a film well, you know, and I can sit there and just watch him. You know, for me, I'm watching people, uh, I watch the guys in Florida who do the kayak fishing. Yeah. You know, yeah. This, it's, you know, aspirational, you know, young blood sort of people going out in Australia catching fish. In, in the UK, I don't, there's not, I mean, Carl, I love Carl's stuff. Uh, okay, I mean, Carl, you know, they're not, they're not just carp anglers, are they? They, 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 do, they, yeah. they do absolutely everything. They've got, they've, they choose different formats and, you know, and some of the, you know, obviously the cord mindsets and the Ridge Monkey adventures and the, the, they're, they're good. There's a lot of stuff which I, I don't get inspiration and that's not true i'm lying to you there i do get inspiration my main inspiration is is obviously it's got to be passion passion for angling catching impossible you had this conversation yesterday you know i i love and even even greater now my love for hugh miles as a wildlife filmmaker he's like my hero him and gavin thurston and you know, these guys are just, they make some amazing, amazing stuff. And obviously, people are into their nature, like Chris Yates, which is, I know it sounds a bit of a cop-out, but, uh, you know, with that, I love the, the wildlife side as much as I do love the fishing. Yeah. You know, um, if there were no birds here, I don't know what I would do. I could, I don't know. But you have a greater regard for those people, obviously, once you start... Um yeah. I mean, Chris, Chris Yates is a, a, a character who has just got... I love that. He's one of those eccentric. people, isn't he? Eccentric, yeah. who just goes through life every day as a story. You know, there's, there's uh, you know, they, just because of their personalities, they probably don't even realise it, but because of the type of people they are, they just, um, they're unusual, aren't they? Yeah. So their lives are a little bit more unusual. Yeah. Yeah, really, really lovable characters. Hugh Miles, were you more so? Was it through fishing and then and then wildlife, or was it the other way around? Um, well, obviously, like through obviously passion, and I think I kind of knew he did like the, the snow leopard and the ospreys, and having just li just gone through uh, the memoirs of Attenborough, finding out he's you know he did quite a lot with Attenborough as well. Yeah, um, and it just opens your eyes. You just think this guy has done some incredible work. Yeah. Um, the snow leopard, I would love to watch that. Oh, it's, I, it's amazing. I went to Kyrgyzstan. Right. I, I climbed a mountain in Kyrgyzstan. Yeah. And the snow leopards are uh, they're pretty well known out there. And actually, the, the biggest peaks there, I think there's five peaks that they call the snow leopards. Right. And um, it's a real big deal to actually, they're quite, they're, they're very timid. Super rare. And, yeah, rare, yeah. aren't they? I mean, I, like when you listen to some of the stories about them spending weeks trying to find specific species you know i saw simon king the other week talking about laying on his back in a tent for like x amount of days to film mating rabbits which doesn't sound very interesting but the way he describes it was just awesome and he was you know the experience of being in a tent and having two bottles and deciding which one to wee in what one to drink uh, you know don't get them mixed yeah, up yeah yeah it was it was really cool and, but you know the amount of effort that goes into you know, snow leopards aside, because that is like the the peak. 
Um, you know, Hugh's done like, he's done Bengal Tigers and the Ospreys. And, and, and so he's got all that lovely experience. And from my point of view, I want people that I, I look up to in camera work and wildlife. Um, yeah, I, yeah. Hugh, phone me <laughs> and let me interview you. A psychic interview, yeah. and I can film you. That I'd be, be up it. for that. I'd love to. Um, I'd love to speak to Hugh, Hugh Miles. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. That would be great. Uh, yeah, and telling stories as well. I mean, it's, it's, it's funny with people. You know, some people have probably got great stories in them, but they don't realise, and they're actually not very good at realising and being able to tell a story, whereas other people, yeah. you know, we, we know these sort of characters that they could turn a great story from an everyday thing into a great story. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. it's a lot of it comes, it's the, the personality of the individual. Yeah, 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 you know, uh, as, yeah. As, as well. Someone like Chris Yates. Um, he's, a, he's amazing. He doesn't need to spruce it up. He can just talk the way he sees the world through his eyes, yes. which is a little bit different. Yeah. And it just sounds, it's just so different. So it sounds wonderful. It is. It's kind of like you, you really hope you know, I know people keep talking about like, you know, Gen Z and you know, new people, you know, new generations of the young coming through. And yes, well, of course, we want people to appreciate these people. And things, things always, things change, you know. You know, tomorrow's heroes are going to be people who, you know, playing Call of Duty and CSGO, and, which is fine. I have no problem with that. As long as, you know, people like us who like appreciate them, we, we will always appreciate them. You know, whether they will go into history, into the young angling, you know, Gen Z anglers, I hope so. But shit changes. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse my French. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it, it, it does. I can definitely see, I can kind of see three generations of carp anglers now. I can mm. see the generation above us, like your, uh, your Rod Hutchinson's, Richie's, yeah, you know, yeah. they, those sort of Chris Yates, those sort of people. Um, then, unfortunately, our generation. <laughs> so we're not the young generation anymore. No, we're not. <laughs> which, that I, I would say that the, 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 the gap between those two isn't, isn't that huge in terms no. of, um, you know, how we see the sport, um, you know, yeah, what, yeah. what it kind of... But then the, the generation down, I, I, I see, I definitely see a difference. Not, not, necessarily, uh, not necessarily a bad thing. But the whole approach to it, it's, it can be more competitive. Yeah. I'm not saying that. I mean, because there there are more fish to catch, there are more venues with lots of fishing nowadays. So yeah. it's going to make it competitive because there's more to sort of go at. Do you mean competitive as in like they want to just catch bigger fish? Yeah, they they want to catch bigger fish and they want yeah. to catch lots of fish. And I yeah. think we mentioned the other day there are people that come into it as well and you know this you've heard people talk about this loads of times mm. but their expectations are um yes they're, yeah. they're unrealistic and even if and even if they do you know i'm not saying anything new here but even if they do achieve that you know that 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 goal yeah. it's like what have you really got out of it because you haven't spent you know like 30 years waiting to catch your first 40 pounder or your first 30 pounder. I, I yeah. know people that started carp fishing the same time as me and they catch plenty of fish and they never caught a 30 pounder. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it feels, ex and, and because they're not, and because they are, you know, we're kind of sat, sit, still in our sort of generation, they, they don't care. No. It still feels like, like 1992, 1993 to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, they're yeah. just p still patiently waiting to catch their first 30 pounder. That's, that's a good place to be. If you can, if you can pause yourself, you know, not not you know, everybody wants to learn and be, you know, get better at what they do. It doesn't mean you have to have, you know, it's like it's like life. You just you don't need to have all the money in the world. You can have all the experiences in the world, and you know, meet new people and do new things. You know, you don't need to be rewarded with a lot of, you know, there's no, it's not like that rainbow analogy again. Just you know. Don't always chase that. There's so much in the journey. The, 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 yeah. And the, and the fishing is exactly the same thing. Go there, look out there, look out into this, this amazing view. And yes, there will be some fish in that lake. What is that? That is a Spitfire. Rounded wings at the top. No, it's not. It's not got Yeah, that's colors. not a Spitfire, so I'm a bit of a plane geek. Actually. It's not, no, no, it's got, look at the shape of its wings. 
Yeah, it's got the same wing. You, you, Spitfires are pretty rare. <laughs> Sounds meaty. But another thing we were saying, like you know, with um, if you could take um, if you could take something, you know, a lesson that you you could pass on to your like, you know, the, the old cliche, take yeah, your yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah. What would it be? And uh, we said as well because you see this a lot nowadays, and I see it in myself as well. Um, what would you tell your young your 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 young ten year old self? And it would be to make sure that you absolutely enjoy what you're doing. And it and it doesn't sound like a particularly deep answer, mm. but I, there's a lot there's a lot of people there's a lot of people around nowadays that are doing stuff like this, doing whatever, and they're doing and they're not they're not happy. They're yeah. not they're not enjoying it. Yeah. For for those reasons, because you know the, you know the you know things you know they put it in their heads that they need to do this and do that as soon as you do that you've lost you've yeah. lost i'll tell you what another good way gauging definitely with mountaineering you know of gauging how much you really really want something is and i sort of thought about this a few weeks ago um when you're trying to achieve something like climbing a mountain mm. You've got your desire to want to get to the top. Yeah. Generally, the outcome of, you know, your ambition depends on whether your desire can outride this other thing called resistance. Yeah. That thing that when you're going up and your heart's pounding out your chest and you're feeling really, really sick and, you're, and this resistance is telling you to stop you're too ill, stop, you can't do it, give up, all your body's aching. So then you've got desire versus resistance. Yeah, yeah. And if you go back down, you think, okay, resistance beat me today. If you get to the top, my desire was stronger than anything else. Yeah. And, um, you know, and I, I, I know that, they, you know, and I, 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 so I kind of, um, you can kind of see how much people want things by their desire or, you know, those people that are like competitive and they go out and they put it, it's all, all at all costs, but then yeah. they, they give up or they get angry and they have to walk away. It's like, you've just, you know. Is there, is there any synergy between me finishing my Lego Millennium Falcon? Congratulations. Yep, thank you. Um, when I, it took me ages to do it and I kept dropping it and coming back to it, dropping it, not dropping it physically, because that would be a complete devastator. I kind of got to the point though, and I could see the light, you know, this huge monster thing, it's amazing. And I'm building it and I'm building it. I'm just over dramatizing this completely. No, but, it's awesome. But, but, it's, it's, it's really good. But it's, it's, it's there and it's um, no, last thing, the, the turret goes on here and then done. And then I think once you start to see the light, I think you, you, you're, you're winning the battle, aren't you? Well, what that, I was that, say, that's the point where you're getting to where yeah. you can see that last turret or you can see the summit it's not very far yeah, away yeah, yeah. from you or whatever it is but what I was going to say is yeah. is that when I put that piece on and I sat back and looked at it and I made a little film of it and did that with it, you know put it down it was done my experience was done and it was not like where's the next mountain or where's the next big piece of Lego I just kind of felt there's a bit of a hole you know what I mean? Like you've, you've made, you've dug this hole. But do you, do you think that's a hole? Do you think that is a hole? Because do you think, would, it, would it not be more frustrating to like... Keep uh, going on it. You know, catch a, a big fish or climb Everest and then go, oh no, I've got to go and climb K2 now or whatever. Do, do you not think that that is endless and there's no, there's no, when, when you're in that cycle, there's no end to it. Well, the thing is that Millennium Falcon, there is no bigger set. That's the biggest one out there. <laughs> I think you should be very satisfied with that. I feel satisfied. Yeah. I kind of, it did feel, feel like a, there was a bit of a, a void in my life. And I was thinking, what should I do tonight? Shall I do this? Shall I do my, oh, I've done my Lego. So do you think you do need another project now? Because you said you like projects. I do like projects. And I think this, this is a project. You know, when, when I was thinking about, okay, so I spoke to you this week, was it? Or last week? So, so I come up, we're going to fishing. I've got to make a video, I've got to make a video, I want to keep my little series going. Um, and it is a project, you kind of, in your mind, you kind of think, we could do this and we could do this, I've got some cards, but, and, and you know, like you were saying, what are we going to do with this? What are we going to do? What are we going to catch fish? What 
we just do what we do. Chat, talk rubbish for us. Like, great, isn't it? Yeah. And but so this is this is like that thing where I continue, continue. But but like you were saying earlier though, you know, that momentum to keep things going, you're doing your thing. You're doing your midlife crisis. You know, I think that is you know, obviously I I've I've kind of known about it and was there to help you sort of start the thing and and now you're kind of doing it. And that's that's a that's a it was a big project. I think it's a big project. Yeah, yeah I've only just started that. <laughs> you know, I mean, I you know, I think you, it's good though, man. You, think, you know, crikey, what have I, what have I let myself in for? But I think, um, it, it, I can only do it like with you, like building your your Millennium Falcon. You know, yeah. I can only really do something if I've got an absolute passion, and I know that it comes from, it comes from the heart. Yeah, yeah. So if it comes from the heart. It's not, it's not, it's, it's definitely not as difficult, is it? Because it's, it's, you're not having to force things as much. No, no, no. But, um, it's, um, but it is a hell of a project and, you know, and it's a lot easier to be employed by somebody, you know, yeah. as a media presenter or anything, yeah. to just be told, right, okay, this is your work, you know, five days a week, yeah. go off and do that. And then you can not, when you're doing something like that on your own, yeah. You know, you're having to put your own finances into it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, you're, 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 you know, it's taking you time to write things and put things, uh, put scripts up, and 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 something like this. You know, it evolves as well. It's not, it's, it's not going to look like, it's not going to look like this in a few months. But you know, it's like, so you've got this gradual, you're like going up a flight of steps, aren't you? Yeah, all yeah, the time. yeah, yeah, yeah. You just gradually. That's it. So man, it's, that's... A, it's. It, it does, but it's, it's a labour of love. To, yeah, well, yeah, labour of love, but you know, like you say, like with your building project, it you know, you do feel extra satisfaction when you're doing something which you're not being paid to do it. Yeah, you have to do it off your own back. You do, but then you chose to do that. Like I chose to buy. Actually, do you know what? Somebody bought me that million for my birthday. Yes. Not saying that I didn't yeah. want it, because you know, it's, it's. I think it's a thing where if you are, you know. If if like I've dragged you here, you know I've said sorry we're gonna fish. Oh, I don't oh, want to no, fish. Yeah, yeah. I can't. I don't, I don't really want to do it. You know, it's the most awful place. Barren, just water, a few birds diving on your bait. Ugly. You know, horrible. it's horrible. Yeah. But you know, so so. But unlike that, <laughs> you know, a lot of the stuff that we want to do, our passion stuff. We choose to do it, don't we? So. Yeah, we, we choose to do it, but it's still, but it's a satisfaction that it, we've got it in ourselves to choose to do those things. Yeah. You know, it's not like, oh no, I've just chose to do it. Yeah, but it's in you to want to do that. And it's not always in it. It's not always in people to want to do things. No, 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 no. So no. it's like, you know, you can give yourself a bit of a pat on the back and think, well, you know, thank God, you know, we, you know, we do, you know, you think like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so I wouldn't, and nor would you. You wouldn't want to not try and be innovative and try and do different things. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so but I think it's. Um, yeah, I we, think this thing though, this thing that we're doing right now. Well, I am doing. Are you doing it? Are you out there now? No, oh, you're not out. Okay. No. So no. you rest in your swim. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I um, I don't like. I don't like leaving rods out in the water. Do not. Okay. No, I don't. No. Um, I um, I definitely like rest and swim. So before I came round here, I just do you know what? Another great thing with this trip, fishing mm. at Catapult Range. Yes. Which is like, yeah. Yeah. crikey, uh, you know, we 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 spawned, you know, you know the spawn has almost become like the go-to tool, isn't it? It's, yeah. You know, it's like oh, if you haven't got your spawn, what do you do? And um, this trip has been great. Where I'm fishing. Catapult range, um, the hefty old distance of seven and a, and a bit wraps. <laughs> what, um, with your 13 foot rods? With my 13 foot rods, <laughs> absolute pain. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, seven, just over seven wraps. Yeah. And being able to bait up a great thing with a catapult is as well. I mean, I know you can do it with the spawn. Yeah. But with a catapult, you can, because you do like to, I like to top the swimmer like a match angler would do. You know? Yeah. You like yeah, to yeah. Keep, like, keep the swim. The swim I do think fish have been over me this morning. 
Um, well, I said I heard your alarm go off. That might have been. I think that was the coup. Uh, yes. Are you saying you, you had one earlier than that though? I, yeah, I had one earlier. I think I think they're birds, but I have got a feeling that they've they've been they they've been fish on me. I'm, yeah. They've been fish on me this morning. Um but um but you know, being able to fish at like catapult range yeah. and just a couple of pouchfuls of bait every every few hours. Yeah, you can do that with a spawn, but a spawn is still disturbance and having to Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, quite, yeah. It's quite. It's a, it's a really nice way of. Yeah, uh, I like. I like using the catapult. And just you know, it's kind of not 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 from an accuracy point of view, but it's just easy, isn't it? You just pop it out, pop, I, pop, pop. Do you know what? I, 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 I like the spread more yes, as well. Yeah. Which is we all say that the spawns, don't we? We get these like tight clusters of bait on the bottom. Like the problem I, I always find though is I always mix my bait with like the pellet yeah. and the, you know, the bits, and so yeah. when you when you put it out, you just draw a line yes which is not the not the worst thing in the world your boilers go 12 miles past your place where you want them to go because you're trying to put with a pellet as well <laughs> do you um as a, as a general rule do you find that you always like to mix bait do you know what i see that when we fished the mirror and we were filming i can't remember which one it was and i had tank yeah uh, under the advice of ash he said just use boily in that. I told you, know, you that. Oh, it was you. Did you? <laughs> Did you? I'm going to oh. take some flipping credit for that. All right, son. okay, okay. <laughs> I was told. <laughs> we were both fishing with boilers, weren't we? Yes. Because, shall we, uh, be, but because the last time we were filming up here, we, um, we, were, we were watching the fish feeding, but they, we just could not get them to pick a yes. rig up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, could, I would always mix. Like I like a mix. I like part boily, part particle. Not, I don't particle. Um, you know, a pellet and a bit of sweet corn, bit colour. I think I don't know. That's just always been my thing, and it, it it's worked sometimes for me. Um, but when we went down there, you told me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You, you know, let's just use boily, which is what I did. I had the boat, dropped it on one spot. Literally, it must have been about two, two kilos. It's quite a big lump of it, and then, and then I, had, I had a fish of it. Why I haven't kept that going? I keep it going. I don't know. Yeah. I've um, here we go. Because again, I've I spoke about this sweet corn stuff enough times, but it. I like the sweet I, corn. But, but sweet corn is an unbelievable bait, and it's better fished on its own. Yeah. And the reason why. If you did start to use sweet corn on your own, the reason you would catch more fish is because most people don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it, it just, sweet corn is, God, I'm talking about sweet corn again. <laughs> but it, it, it's like, it's like the perfect bait. Yeah. It's, you can't make boilies really that size, but there is, but there is. Well, we, that's not true. <laughs> Oh yeah. As in the person who owns this leg has the corns. It has. He has the corns. Yes. They are amazing. <laughs> like perfect size sh corn shape. The corns. Obviously, shape, they're, okay. not they're not boilies. They're not boilies. Yeah. But, but yeah, to, yeah. To, it's about actually to you know to they they that that they that in between shape between like boilies which are substantial and yeah. they're going to eat a boilie and they know they've eaten a boilie. Yeah. Versus a grain of particle which is tiny and they just eat it and eat and, eat and not yeah. realize sweet corn is like it's that perfect medium yeah. it's that perfect size it's it's got that color i don't and it's got that digestibility that means that they just keep needing to eat it yeah. so it's got it's got all the factors of what would it's not yeah, great yeah. for their long-term health it just goes straight through them yeah yeah, yeah. But it's, in terms of a bait to actually use to catch fish it's brilliant. Yeah. And um, what, why, why would you want to mix it? I mean, yeah. once you mix in it, I, it can, um, you, you're starting to get into that selective feeding scenario if you're not careful. I know it's small. It might not be, but when I've used it on my own, it's made a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not just me. There's lots of people now that are using it, you can see. Um, but it's better fished on its own. And I think, I don't know, I think a lot of bait I like using oils and powders and stuff like we're doing with the boilies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So 
if that's adding something to it, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what it. But, I like, yeah, I like, I like covering, coating your boilies, and it's not that crumb. Yeah. Well, you know, it's going to kind of just spread on the base there, or. You well, know, exactly. You don't always need to. You don't always just need to use the boilie in their entirety, do you? You can, you can, you can turn them into smaller particle as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. um. But yeah, I don't know. It's, do you not find like with this? It's a bit of a puzzle, right? And the more pieces that you've got, it, it's, it's, it's harder, isn't it? Because yeah. you're, you're, trying to, you're trying to sort of match everything up together. Whereas if you can eradicate certain things, you might turn around and go, oh, yeah, no, but I needed that to do that. But it's like, I think you've got to get rid of that train of thought. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, and rather than say, oh, I need to add pellet or whatever to bait or whatever, it's yeah. like, just, no, I'm happy with this because and uh it's, it's it's all it's it's a mind thing isn't it really because <laughs> well, whatever you say right they go oh there he goes again he don't know what he's talking about anyway well, how many 50 pounders does he call <laughs> you know but the, but you but then you'll but you'll get you'll get everybody's going to contradict each other right? yeah, yeah, yeah yeah but yeah, you can yeah, only yeah. talk from experience yeah you just talk from experience that's all it is and if, if and we, my and experience we do is, talk yes <laughs> We are, but if yeah. our experiences are different, yeah. they're just different, aren't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't make you better or worse. Well, that, that's what makes it, you know, intriguing. This thing, doesn't it? It's, it's just there's, there's so many different ways to do it. Yeah. If there was one way to do it, it'd be boring. <laughs> you know, if and, and it's the same. You know, everybody says the same thing. If you caught every time you went, it would be boring. I'd be good fun that would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, like I, saying, I, I, if I you had all the money I, in the world, you'd be unhappy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'd find something else to make you unhappy instead. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, no, I know people that go fishing all the time and seem to always catch. <laughs> and I think, yeah. <laughs>